I've already posted the top 10 Star Trek parodies, and now I want to do the same with the Prince of Darkness. Horror and comedy have gone hand in hand since 1896 when innovative filmmaker George Mellies created his masterpiece House of the Devil. It was deemed a lost film until a copy was found at the New Zealand Film Archive in 1988. The short film was shot in Mellies' garden in Montreal, Saint Saint Denis, and his future wife Jehan Dialsi can be seen emerging from the cauldron. The House of the Devil uses plenty of special effects that depict a bat turning into a human and entities appearing out of thin air. The first Dracula parody must have been when the greatest Dracula of all time sent up his performance in Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. It was one of only two times that he played the character, and with that, let's start our countdown. The Halloween that almost wasn't. In this little-known TV special, Dracula goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Queen of Witches to save Halloween. After years of being Dracula's shadow, the witch goes on strike and refuses to appear on Halloween unless Dracula meets her conditions. Of course, the proud Count Dracula is having none of it. Full of Halloween hijinks, the Halloween that almost wasn't has an extremely comedic take on Dracula. There are plenty of one-liners to go around. It's one of those days I wish I was dead and stayed dead. And the witch's sass plays off perfectly against Dracula's dramatic posturing. Some experts believe that Count Dracula himself is behind this threat to end Halloween. How dare they suggest such a thing? Halloween is my national holiday! Stop that, you sniveling little cape kisser, and tell me where the werewolf went. He's in Florida, your menace. Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf, the third film in the Scooby-Doo franchise ever. Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf stars Count Dracula as its bumbling villain and Shaggy as the Reluctant Werewolf. After the werewolf retires to Florida, Dracula is desperate to find a new werewolf to complete his monster lineup for the annual car race. He chooses Shaggy and does everything in his power to trap him in his new role. Of course, he fails spectacularly in true cartoon villain fashion. Accompanying Dracula in his crazy antics are his ditzy wife, Vanapira, and his incompetent assistants, the dull-witted Crunch and the articulate Brunch. I will have your son. The Monster Squad Duncan Regger is a perfect Dracula in this film about a group of kids who have to take on the universal monsters. Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Mummy, and even the creature from the Black Lagoon appear. The Monster Squad is a club of preteens who idolize the universal classic monster movies and their non-human stars. Club leader Sean Crenshaw, whose younger sister, Phoebe, desperately wants to join the club, is given the diary of legendary monster hunter Dr. Abraham Van Helsing, but his excitement abates when he finds it is written in German. Sean and the rest of the monster squad, his best friend and second in command Patrick Rhodes, clumsy Horace, tough older kid Rudy and little Eugene, go to visit an elderly man known as the scary German guy, actually a kind gentleman and a former concentration camp prisoner, to translate the diary. You know, Miss Gaylor, that uh, dress is very becoming. Most attractive. Thank you, sweetie pie. A little music, perhaps. And uh, then... Yes. Dracula and Son! Most young audiences know Christopher Lee from Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. Older audiences are aware he also played Dracula in several Dracula films. What some might not know is that he also spoke French. Starring Christopher Lee and French actor Bernard Menez, Dracula and Son is a wacky French comedy about Dracula and his son adjusting to life in the modern world. A refreshing departure from his usual fare of terror, Lee's Dracula is a typical elder reconciling the demands of his new life with his past, while Ferdinand is a typical rebel trying to forge his own path. Renfield This film just missed a positive score on Rotten Tomatoes at 58%. The audience score was much higher at 79%. The consensus reads, although it fails to take full advantage of its committed stars and killer premise, 
Renfield's batty horror comedy blend sinks in just enough to leave an impression. Nicholas Holt's Renfield is trying to break away from his master's hold on him. Nicholas Cage's Dracula doesn't appreciate that at all. Critic Lee Clark Zump from Tampa says, What Renfield delivers is sick, twisted fun. If you happen to be a fan of Lloyd Kaufman and Troma Horror, or Charles Band in Full Moon Productions, Renfield is going to be right up your alley. Unlike the films from Troma and Full Moon though, Renfield has an ample budget to make all the blood and guts convincingly ghastly, and a first-rate cast able to bring depth to cookie-cutter characters. She dies, a victim of this unspeakable creature. She will become one herself. Dracula Dead and Loving It, directed by Mel Brooks and starring Leslie Nielsen as Count Dracula, Dracula, Dead and Loving It is the most side-splitting version of The Vampire King to date. A loving parody of the vampire story, the film pokes fun at the conventions of the genre while also paying homage to it. Dracula is elegant and bungling in equal measure, a beautiful recipe with just the right amount of slapstick, one-liners, and running gags, a butt of jokes that is dangerous even to audiences. If his victims don't die of vampire bites, they will most certainly die of laughter. Listen, you're making enough noise to wake up the dead. I don't have to wake him up. He's up. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. In this old classic, the funniest duo of the 1940s battles Dracula himself as he tries to revive Frankenstein's monster as his slave. Joining them in the fight is Larry Talbot, also known as the Wolfman. Although he maintains most of his menace, this Dracula is not above trolling others for the heck of it or taking part in physical comedy, like fighting the Wolfman with a chair. Bela Lugosi might not be famous for his comedy, but he sure is good enough to pull it off. And I can give you eternal life. I knew it an insurance salesman. I've already got Prudential. Love at first bite. In one of the rare instances when the bad guy gets the girl, Dracula is both cool and funny in love at first bite. Driven from his castle, Count Dracula is a fish out of water in the Big Apple. However, he is also the perfect blend of suave seducer and hopeless romantic to melt the heart of a cynical New York City woman. Balancing the cheesiness with sincerity and heart, Dracula effortlessly brushes aside the hilariously incompetent competition and sweeps her off her feet while also lending plenty of laughs in the process. If I drink that... I have not drunk enough for you to change. You must be near death to become one of us. Buffy the Vampire Slayer While chasing a vampire in a cemetery, Buffy meets Dracula, who has come to Sunnydale to meet her. Buffy feels proud with the revelation of the greatest vampire in the world knowing her name. Meanwhile, Giles secretly tells Willow that he will return to England since Buffy does not need his service as Watcher anymore. Dracula turns Xander into his slave, and during the night, he visits Buffy, bites and put her under his thrall. Buffy hides the bite with a scarf and becomes powerless and seduced by the Dark Prince, who promises to disclose to her the darkness of her powers and increase them. Rudolph Martin plays Dracula opposite Sarah Michelle Gellar's Buffy. Hotel Transylvania Franchise The owner of Hotel Transylvania, a sanctuary for all monsters, Count Dracula stars in Sony Pictures' animated saga of Hotel Transylvania. When his daughter Mavis falls in love with a human man, Dracula must learn to navigate the changes in his life and take on the challenges of family, parenthood, and identity. Voiced by Adam Sandler, Count Dracula of Hotel Transylvania is an adorably doting family man with a sarcastic sense of humor, hilarious expressions, and slick moves. He is funny whether he tries to be or not. That was our look at the top 10 Dracula parodies based on lists from Ranker and CBR. What do you think? What was your favorite movie or TV show on this list? Is there a Dracula parody we left out? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to share this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out my own Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter franchise in the comments section. Until next time this is Axel, and for Kevin Given saying live long and prosper, may the force be with you and keep reaching for the stars.